everybody. Today's date is September 10th, 2001, and we're really excited to talk about video games. All is right in the world. Joining us today, we've got Jason from Save Data. Can't go you, to the other guest yet. You can't escape it. No matter what channel it is, I can never escape what's about to come, I'm sure. <laughs> can't escape it. What do you mean? The world's perfect. Nothing yeah, bad the world's could perfect. happen. Yeah. Uh, we've also got uh, David from Save Data. Man, I can't believe that today is the day that Advance Wars 1 for the Game Boy Advance came out. Man, perfect day. Nothing's going to go <laughs> wrong tomorrow and tank the sales of this game. It's going to be super successful. That that franchise is going to go sky high, you know? Beautiful. I, I did hear a weird fact, which is that Band of Brothers started airing like two or three weeks before 9-11 and its viewership tanked after 9-11 and it had to like claw back some of its success because people were just not in the mood after 9-11 yeah advance wars released <laughs> september yeah. 10th 2001 yeah. uh and then uh, they the new one that where they remastered it was about to come out when russia invaded ukraine yes i yeah. do remember so they that. delayed that one because <laughs> they knew what happened the last time yeah. Which probably ended up uh, screwing them too. And honestly, I think they over delayed that one. Yeah, they delayed yeah. like a whole year. They're just like waiting and waiting. They're like, surely this war will end. And I'm like, oh no, it's not going no. to. So the game just comes out now. <laughs> uh, speaking of 9 11, we had a crazy Pokemon tournament this weekend. Yeah. Uh, it was a disaster. Jason, I'm kidding. I, I, that's the thing is, I, so I did not listen to the commentary because wow. I was in, it was in the waiting room. But I could I could get taste of it when I came in and moments like talking to you and I could tell you were yeah. just falling apart. So I'm I'm curious to hear from your perspective. How do you think the tournament yeah. went? Bridge asked me this too, actually, after the fact. Uh, I'm I'm it's strangely a bit of a perfectionist. Like I'm glad it went well. I lost my voice. You guys had a fun. I'm glad everybody was a little bit inexperienced more than I thought because I think that mm -hmm. worked for how fun the tournament was overall. We had some really funny moments i think yours versus yeah. chris has got to be one of my favorite matches of all time uh absolutely ridiculous and it would have not been as good if you know we just played standard i think it's funny yeah what happened um yeah i mean if if ian put a poison move on amungus or switched to muck muck yeah it wouldn't, no, so it wouldn't have I been did, as funny i did have muck he was at like 15 percent health i think like he was I, at, I thought it was at like 40 yeah, but he he kept heavy hitting me. Like I, I the first two Pokemon I played had the two poison moves, and I I did some damage with them. But then he started taking them out, and I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna risk them. Just just predict so I'll, the I'll rest. Do my others for a bit. The monk on the monk on the rest turn. And That's then what I was thinking. Drain punch. Too. That's too much. To. That's too much for me to understand. <laughs> uh, so so yeah. it's it's funny because I, I I looked back at that match. I was like, you know what, Ian probably as as much as I hate it, probably technically played that correctly because. <laughs> If you stall it out, you have zero chance to win. Like it, technically speaking, yeah. you could have switched and got like a percentage. It's the small stuff like that. I'm like, yeah, the commentary. I missed a couple items, for example. I don't think it mattered. I missed the, uh, some items. I missed some abilities. So that's just gonna happen because I just made some mistakes. I mean, who could have um, thought Will would have balloons on pretty much every yeah. Pokemon in his entire team? There, yeah, there, and <laughs> taking a match against against Zach as well. That was surprising that was funny. to me. That was there was good. There was a like a lumberry I missed. Uh, there was a nightshade. I said how it worked incorrectly. So you asked me how like I appreciate. It. I was like I'll notice the small things when I go back. I'm like ah, I kind of messed up there. But I think the most important thing is I hopefully everybody had a fun time, especially the oh, players yeah. and the, the fans. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't want to do it chat, again. Chat was going wild. Like, they were they going were, insane. They, they were. They were insane, and and especially my matches. They were pissed off, and I was they like, were. "This is <laughs> they this were. is good content." You have one You're HP pissed. against Jake. <laughs> one HP yeah. with his last yeah. move, last resort. Literally the last yeah. resort he had. One HP, you win. Yep. I felt so bad for him. It would have been the only win he had. Too. Jake was robbed. That's that's Jake, how I Jake, felt. Jake, Jake was absolutely robbed. Almost on put that all one. his teams full mono too. Followed it too close yeah. to the. <laughs> the tier and got uh ran over in a couple matches unfortunately um but yeah. i i don't like pokemon that much i watched that whole thing live, like from yeah. beginning to end it was it was a i don't know how he's gonna edit it i really don't if he's gonna break up a part honestly matches. the only thing i would edit is like some like of the setup time air, between yeah. matches yeah everything else yeah. is perfect don't change anything <laughs> i That's literally great. started losing it a couple times i started the the when you perth turn into toxapex i'm like this is you both <laughs> was, had like this it was brilliant <laughs> like 
like unintentional, but it was just like, okay, I'm like struggling through this and then he starts doing it and I'm like, okay, but I could do the same thing. Yeah. And then we just, we just do that for a bit. And I'm like, I, I'm, I'm here all day for this, buddy. I, the strategy's working. I'll just keep doing this. It's oh, crazy was... how it didn't even go, the tournament didn't even go how it planned. And I still think it worked out perfectly. I, uh, we put a lot of effort into it. I'm glad just that if anybody enjoyed it, I'm hoping that it, it does decently well uh, in a response. Cause honestly, I would love to do it again. Like I said, based off which is even yeah. happened, how fun it was. So. That was one of my questions was what what would you change for next time? Um maybe make a maybe like a gen lock or something like that. Just some kind of other way to kind of get everybody yeah, involved. Like, like this guy gets like this gen generation. One. Yeah, this guy gets this generation, can pick any Pokemon from there. Oh, yeah. some teams. That'd, be, that'd be fun. Um Gen Lock would be fun. Some kind of way to like, you know, maybe you have to pick, you know, something with basically some limiters to how you pick your guys uh maybe at all yeah. like they have to be a one mono type they can't be like a dual type guy i don't know there's a bunch of ways you can do different teams maybe i think i want to do that team based one you like okay i'm sending out i got my squad of four you got your squad of four it won't be me i still like commentating and pull, like over playing actually i fucking love it four v four okay i'll send this guy out there this guy out there trying to get points or something like that that'd be kind of fun mm -hmm. too. yeah one of the things excuse me, talking about editing the video we were talking about was if we pre-recorded all the matches, but your reaction and, and somebody went through and edited the, the matches down a little bit just to get rid of the dead time. And so the stream is watching the playback live. You're seeing it for the first time. And for the players, we only know our matches. So we're all kind of watching it okay. together to kind okay. of see as it's going through. That was one of the one of the ideas we had to kind of make it like you said get rid of the dead time yeah. a little bit and, and just have it go a little bit smoother because i was feeling i was feeling it for zach and for you like when we started talking about okay we're gonna have two discord rooms going and you're gonna be swapping yeah. in you're gonna be swapping out i was like holy shit well, this you, is getting complex the audience, the audience <laughs> could hear the the voice starting it is your fault yeah. by the way 100 <laughs> percent. two of your matches did Thank go him. the longest i'm just saying uh and i i I will say for that poison fairy, I did not stop talking basically that entire time. So if you ever oh, yeah. go back, your commentary was killer. Yeah. If you, if you go back, that one I was on it. Whether or not it was important information. Uh, what was that? It was like I mean, honestly, turns. the least important information was the most entertaining. Yeah. So <laughs> I think at one point I said like because Ian like when he killed somebody, he was like, "Yeah, I got him." I said Ian nodding his head. Acting like he played well this match or something. It'd be like because I would see people in their camera like it seconds worked. later delayed. Like yeah, they would, I would commentate on that. Same. Zach flexed at yeah. one point. I was like Zach flexing with his non-existent muscles. Like like I was like I was so <laughs> done with just like everybody at this like tournament at some point. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure during the Jake match at one point you walked away, didn't you? I uh, I got up out of my thing when you both switched to toxic pack yeah it was the toxic yeah. I, yeah. I couldn't do it anymore <laughs> I, was I was like just, this is the bad ending we did that so, like three times it was so good yeah <laughs> you both rested and all that fun stuff but it was oh. fun like i said there's a there's so many different ways you could do that tournament and still have a fun time and yeah and, so. and i think like you said the fact that it, you know we went into it with a seed order and it, it didn't get fully reversed but like carl was lowest ranked seed yeah. and he ended up tying for a second you know and it just Carl it, had dragon why was he the lowest <laughs> well, he, well this is pre-draft this, this was just like who oh, has the least experience we'll, we'll, pick dragon we'll first, let them yeah. draft yeah so yeah it ended up carl worked just, the hardest i think in between besides like yeah. us on the turn carl was going in on in terms of studying and practicing yeah he was so i didn't i didn't practice that much but i probably put in i probably put in six or seven hours of prep and oh wow let me, you, okay. let me tell you what i did so part of it is like i'm not saying i played perfectly nowhere near that but the one thing i get pissed about is people saying why did you only have two poison moves and the reason why i get pissed is i know my team composition was incredible okay. and the reason why is i went to i did a shitload of research and the key one was going to smoke on and they keep record of pretty much all the the ranked the pokemon sets, showdown yeah. matches and i literally just went there and ripped from the monotype 1760 elo just ripped the top meta teams so i know my teams were stacked and i did have to make some changes to accommodate okay. for this tournament but my problem was i didn't know how to play them that's that's true. where things fell apart yeah. but i they're, 
I had a shitload of spreadsheets. Like you guys, I'll tell you this. You guys kept posting the images where you're like, here's so-and-so's team. And I was like, you fucking idiots. And I grabbed that image. I would feed it in a chat GB team. Be like, tell me what these Pokemon are. And it would tell me what the Pokemon was. And then I would put it in a spreadsheet and I have chat GPT formulas, go and find what those Pokemon are weak to. Yeah. And then I would grade each team. So then like when I'm going against, uh, when I went against Chris, I knew I needed to pick my poison team because my dark team was pretty good against him and he would see that as well. So he would counterpick my dark, which would be fairy. fairy, Yeah. Yeah. And I only knew that because I knew his teams. I knew his comp. I knew it all the way through because of how much prep I did. But the problem really came down to, I didn't know how to play the teams. I I appreciate, I appreciate going and doing a, first of all, that much investment on your own end, because it is a lot of prep and not knowing a space that you're not as comfortable with. There was a move. Uh, I, I believe, even off the top of my head, I can remember it because it was very odd choice. Slow King, poison Slow King, very high special attack. He had yeah. earthquake. I probably yeah. would have put a poison stab on him. That that uh, your attackers with poison stabs oh, no, probably no. should have. So that's where way. that's where it's not that I disagree with you because I don't know why he had earthquake. But the moves were coming from okay. Smogon as well. Fine. Like it yeah. was, it was literally, it was like I was building to that high level meta, and we weren't playing at that level. We were not and playing did, yeah. And I didn't know that strategy. And I, I will tell you, the the big change I made was a lot of the Pokemon, especially on the Dark Team, had um, <clears throat> they had like choice specs and yeah. choice scarf. We had Rocky which, helmets on all of them. I thought. Well, I replaced them with Rocky helmets because I, I tried practicing with choice specs and, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but I believe the whole thing is if you're wearing choice specs or whatever, the first move you play is the only Locked. move you can play for the rest of it, but it does a shitload more damage. Not, not the rest on the switch out. You can switch out. And oh, get switch it, out. Right? Yeah. And so that was the thing. I couldn't figure out what they were trying to do there. And I was like, fuck you. I don't want this. I want all yeah. four moves I, available. So that's why they all had Rocky. I helmets. figured nobody would use choice except Zach. And guess what? It really helped his, like his scissor was his best yeah. guy the entire tournament. Yeah, like he had he choice had band super, like he would one shot gotcha. people. That's why it's just, if you're yeah. good with playing the team comps out, choice just rewards you yeah. for playing yeah. correctly because then you have the stuff available and you just get bonus stats. But if you yeah, don't so, know what you're doing, it's bad. Exactly. Yeah. And and that's where, like, I think that was my big problem was, number one, I don't know how to play Pokemon, but I also the team I built was for a much higher meta level. Yeah. Whereas I almost feel like if I had looked at the lower ELOs and built the team based off of that, I would have understood it better, especially because the the other people, the tournament was not filled with ELO 1700 people. We were probably at like what? I don't know, 1100. So I should have well, built a team for that, you know? Lower. Probably, I think it starts at 1000. I, I probably put everybody at 1000. Oh, yeah. Well, I think I'm at 1100 in Pokemon Showdown. Okay. I took like a dozen All matches. Right. So I think, I think like we were probably up to like 1200 or something like that based on what Zach was doing. Yeah. Well, like I said, it's, yeah. it's, it's a lot of practice. I played for a boy at competitive at least probably four to five years. So Oof. yeah. I really snow. Yeah, well. it was crazy. One other idea, just to close this out, one other idea, because while you were suffering doing commentary for like four hours straight, uh, I we loved were, it. I fucking love it. Your, yeah. While your voice was suffering, at least. Yeah, my voice yeah. was suffering. Yeah, we we were just chilling in the in the backstage uh, voice chat and we were coming up with ideas. And one of the things we came up with was. Rand is for the next tournament, randomizing it. So maybe yeah. it's a random draft of Pokemon. <laughs> so you get a team of six random fucking Pokemon or something like that. Like, like we almost want to lean in. We almost want to take away some of the prep to make it easier and add a randomized element. Yeah, so you something could do to like think about random, there. but have like stipulations when you roll it of like, OK, yeah. you can't have these like these certain Pokemon are banned. And yeah. also, yeah, like you a get so many of, like, of each tier of Pokemon or whatever. Like, I like how yeah, they like, banned all of the mo- yeah, the bonus yeah. move things. That would have just been a disaster. Yeah. But I, like, I just don't want to have like somebody who gets absolutely screwed and they're like, oh, yeah. I have all F tier Pokemon who's not, all, yeah. like, yeah. who are think, all first stage evolution. I think Little Cup is still a great <laughs> just, a, a great thing to do. Little Cup sounds really fun. What's, where what's everyone's like first evolution. Everybody's just first evolution. Yeah. It's ba- it's like oh, the baby okay. Pokemon. Just some just some babies. It's just funny. Yeah, that could work. Because yeah. because you could even go to Smogon and just tell me, hey, tell me the top 200 Pokemon in ranked matches. And that becomes random from those 200 just to make yeah. sure you don't get some shitty, shitty guy on your team. You could definitely do that. Yeah, probably. So yeah. there's a lot of ways to do it. But I had fun. I hope like I said everybody. Had yeah. Fun. And, and 
And hey, kudos for all that prep, because I know you were doing a shitload of prep. Zach built an incredible yeah. overlay. You had that full commentary. At, we, we killed I, it. No, I built, you guys killed I, it. I built every team just to kind of get a vibe of like what you guys are doing. I mean, you killed something, Ian. It was Jason's voice, but you did kill something. You won three matches, right? <laughs> I, I went three and two, baby. Yeah. <laughs> three, it's fucking Carl wild. Went three and two. You went three and two. Did, did Chris go three and two? Chris went three and two. Yeah. Because okay. that last match was three and two versus three and two. And Will went one and four. Yeah, because he took one off Zach, which and, is and so funny. Still, Jake, I know. And that match, <laughs> it it didn't. Look, he shouldn't have won uh, that match, and he he killed it. It, it, Balloons, did, yeah, it didn't man. look like a tough yeah. match for Will. He just like kind of went through it, and Balloons I was like, "What is happening?" Balloons were huge. Balloons against ground. Huge. So Balloons against ground. Brutal. That was crazy. Anyways, uh, let's start talking about some of the games we've been playing. David, uh, let's talk yeah, about Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. How, how's it going for you? Uh, yeah, I think the last time I was on this show was like the end of May. It's actually been quite a bit longer than normal. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in that time, started and finished Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth, which is pretty much Yakuza Like a Dragon in terms of playstyle, except for you can move around the battlefield a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. getting your abilities that fire in lines or AoEs, um, or there's some where like you'll tackle a thing and then it'll be an AoE behind them type of moves. Are easier to set up and like a little less frustrating and annoying because i know in the, in the previous yakuza there were some moves like that where i'm like ah, i just can't kind of line things up correctly like the enemies aren't just standing still and yeah. helping me out so fix a lot of those issues um overall great game another fantastic turn-based jrpg this year there are so many or just jrpgs in general like there's there's so many they're my 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 problem with all the Yakuza games is they're so fucking long because the side long, content's yeah. so good. So I want to do yeah, it. You want to do it? Yeah, yeah. I want to. Do, it's it's a game where I actually want to do all the side content because they're funny. There's this is no different from the previous ones. There are some fucking hilarious appearances. Whether they're new people showing up, people from other uh, Yakuza games, whether it's the Kiryu games or from. Uh, yakuza like a dragon uh mm-hmm. from 2020 uh overall that stuff's great the dondoko island was cool it's basically just a fully functional animal crossing game in the middle of this fucking game Hell yeah that also Hell made yeah. this game take away too long <laughs> <laughs> uh because i got really into that for a while and then went back and i was like oh my god so every every mini game in this takes forever uh but they're all fun. So it was, it was like I'm um, suffering with success, you know. My one issue with the game is the ending. I really hate it. Absolutely hate the ending. It, to this, this is game. the same just... one they played on. They did their playthrough, right? Or is that a different one they did? That was a different one. Okay. Uh, hate, that was Yakuza this. Kiwami or Zero. I forget which one. I think I Zero. It. Yeah, it was like the first one of the earlier games. Okay. Uh, this is like the most recent kind of the felt like the baton pass officially from like yeah uh kiryu to ichiban and i thought they just fumbled the fuck out of that at the end just absolutely fucked in, it up in, fumbled it story-wise gameplay-wise story-wise gameplay-wise it was great okay uh i didn't think the last boss was kind of underwhelming compared to a bunch of the other ones just in general like mechanically not Story wise, uh-huh. mechanically, thought the last boss was kind of like, oh, this yeah, is. I'd rather ha- rather have that than get like fucked, Bill, over and over again, not be able. To yeah, be like I'd rather have yeah. that than like ridiculously hard, and I need to go grind. But this was I've, just like, I've, oh, it's. I've, I've had that. And it frustrated me. Oh, that was the last. The last Yakuza game was like yeah. that. So I feel like, I think they overcorrected in the reverse okay. direction. They're like, ah, oh, the last mm-hmm. one, like, we made you do these two sections where you kind of had to grind because the boss level differences just jumps too much and i just feel like they overcorrected in the opposite direction on this one so i'm hoping with whatever the next one is they correct back a little bit and they hit the sweet spot with it um that's kind of what i'm hoping for but story wise this game let me down real bad without spoiling the crap out of it they build up to a thing the entire game Uh uh-huh and then they don't do it 911 Yes. Yeah. Uh, but like, okay. I... J- just as an off aside, like, 
Is that is Yakuza? I know it's known for decently well for its story. How much of a deal breaker is that for the game itself for you? Like, I think the, personally for me, the ending, if I were like rating it, would probably yeah. bring it down a like good half to whole point on the rating scale. But oh, that, wow. Is that like something you'd be like, I, I don't even want to recommend this game because. No, it's not that okay. bad. Okay. Okay. It doesn't bring it down that far. It's just a matter of like, man, they really are like, part of it was with the game. They had my emotional strings so okay. tightly wound for so much of it. <laughs> and then they're just like, whoop, <laughs> dropped it <laughs> like right at the end. So I was just like, ah, like you built up to this. So to, th- to this ending that I thought you were going to do, even though I thought I knew exactly what it was, they could have given me, and this is rare for me. I usually like to be surprised with how games end, but like they could have given yeah. me exactly what I thought was going to happen. And I'm like, that's the perfect ending. That's why I thought it was going to happen because it was literally the perfect ending to the game and they didn't do it. Um, they build up so much to to like some Kiryu story moments and have you like go back through some of the history of the Yakuza series in this game. And it's like, oh, it's all leading to a moment and then they don't do the yeah. moment. And, I'm and then it like, doesn't happen. Oh, they they messed up. So I I don't know. Like I I thought this game was kind of like the studio moving on. Cause like their, their founder and the guy who really ran the Yakuza series left a year, a few years ago. I think, I think right when the last Yakuza game came out, I believe he, that sounds about right. That sounds right. I think he went to like a NetEase or Tencent studio, but this game felt like, for 99% of the game like the studio was moving on and like creating their own new thing and then they just were like actually no <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it is it better or worse than the final fantasy 7 rebirth ending oh my god oh worse 100% worse worse i like the rebirth it's, ending this no one, it's just I, it's it's just that's interesting because i feel like i have i've not heard anybody complain about the infinite wealth ending but i've heard a lot of complaints about rebirth ending i don't i never understood the complaints for rebirth ending to be honest (laughs) okay like but that's that's kind of good it means it means what i'm hearing is that neither ending is universally bad no it's just i'm sure a bunch of people are fine with the infinite wealth ending it was just like for me i was like oh man they they like they they were getting me and then they just like they had me emotionally and then they absolutely fumbled it whereas like Final Fantasy Rebirth is kind of a also I feel like that one was I don't know what's going to happen with the ending. I'm like, there's Mm -hmm. there are two possibilities. They could go with either one. And they went with one of them, whereas this one, I was like, there's one possibility for how they end this and it's going to be great. And then they're like, nah. Yeah, (laughs) I I just have one question and let me explain it. Um, I remember Will playing Final Fantasy seven remake, not enjoying it at all, but he played the entire thing. And the one thing he brought up about the ending was a cat that randomly shows up in the middle of the Final Fantasy VII remake ending. Did the cat return for Rebirth ending? Oh, cat, the cat is a core Final Fantasy VII character. Oh, but only in, the, only in Rebirth, not in remake. Yes. That was a... That's weird. That scene from remake was 100% there for the people who have played Final Fantasy VII before. And if you oh, have I thought that not was a new put, character. No. That no, character's it's a, from it's Final Fantasy character. 7. So it's it's a if you've played Final Fantasy 7, you're like, oh, cool, that character's there. That makes sense. And it does. If you know the story of Final yeah. Fantasy 7, it makes sense that he's there. Uh well, to a degree. But if you haven't played Final Fantasy 7 before, um yeah. doesn't work. <laughs> In fact, yeah, it's very like, confusing. Who the, f- who the fuck is that? Yeah. The uh the kind of funny guy is one of one of their dudes, uh m- Snowbike Mike, I think is his name, uh, was also doing like first playthrough Final Fantasy VII Remake, had never played the original, and had a very similar moment to Will. Like the cat showed up, he's like, Who the f is that? Fuck is that? I'm 45 hours into this game. Who the hell is that? Yeah. Jeez. And the person next to him had to be like, Oh, that's weird. Why is he here? Yeah. I don't know who that is. But yeah, no, he's uh, he, like that character is a playable character in Rebirth. Like he oh, okay, and, gotcha. and in the original game, like they, they're a playable character. It yeah. doesn't pay off. I don't know why they put him there. And even they did an interview uh, 
I say they, I don't know who it was. Some <laughs> plat- outlet did an interview with like the creator of or director of Rebirth and brought up that like people who played seven, who played seven remake, but didn't play seven were really confused by the cat. And he was like, oh, oh, yeah, I can see that being really confusing. <laughs> We probably shouldn't have done that. <laughs> oh my god, that's wild. Uh, I, I see you've got Baldur's Gate three on this list. Are you diving back in? I am. I'm diving back in. We got a big enough gap between games. I was like super excited about. Yeah. That I was like, oh, I want to go back and pick something up. And I had wanted to go back and do a Dark Urge playthrough of Baldur's Gate three. Yeah. So I'm doing a Dark Urge playthrough of Baldur's Gate three. Oh, how's that going? I, I'm in Act Three, cruising through. Uh, the nice part nice. of playing a second time is I'm skipping most of the dialogue that I saw already. Yeah. Well, that's, really only. I was just saying that's kind of tricky with the the dirge playthrough though, because there's a lot of new dialogue. It's not that tricky. Okay. Because the options that are new are pretty obvious that they're new. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're like when you're playing the Dark Urge, you're kind of a little murder monster. Yeah, yeah. And, so a lot of conversations are shorter. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're shorter, or they'll be like, I, th- my first playthrough was like a neutral good character. Yeah, this one, dark urge, more on the evil side, very much on the evil side. Uh, you'll be like talking to someone about their kid, and you'll look over and be like, I kind of want to kill and eat your child, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they're like, <laughs> oh, what the hell? Uh, and it's 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 a the dark urge playthrough becomes kind of a tightrope walk of murder and not being found out for murder. Yes. You're, so that you can continue murdering. Or, yeah. your, oh, or yeah, yeah. also your companions don't leave you, too, which would be a, like, yeah, annoying. well, <laughs> lost, I lost I lost a good half of my party because I went with the. Uh, the yeah. goblin side during yep. the, the, the siege and knocked oh, one. The initial. So, yeah. yeah. You get Minthara um, though. Minthara. Got Minthara. I actually like Minthara a lot more she's than I She's awesome. I, I she's fucking cool. love her. Yeah. So uh, I'm kind of sad she was such a impossible person to recruit on a good place. They made her easier she, though. They made yeah, it easier. They, they have since though. then, but since like launch, uh at launch it was like yep. you had to knock her yeah. out at like a very specific, specific point moment, so she yeah. was unconscious she when was the siege glitched. Happened. i think she was glitched yeah. still too when she did yeah. that so but minthara is actually a very like, awesome. fun and interesting character she's i like her a lot awesome yeah also she generally approves of my murder so she's my romance partner for the dark oh, yeah. <laughs> there's Hell a few yeah. times where she's like whoa 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 too much <laughs> Well, we murder most people, but not them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I'm having a, a pretty darn good time with it. it. It is funny, like, finding out which of the crew is cool with you doing debauchery. Yeah. Uh, Asterian. Uh, Asterian, Asterian sure. very on board. He but, doesn't well, care at all. It actually fixes guy. a lot of my issues for my first playthrough, because I didn't use Asterian very much in my first playthrough. Yep. And his ending, if he's not in your party frequently, does not make sense. Because you don't talk to him that much. Oh. But if you talk to him and build out a, a relationship with him and he like tells you more things, I'm like, oh, wow, it's really obvious what you're going to do in your ending this time. <laughs> like, I totally get it. That was on me last time. We didn't connect well enough. See, my, my experience with Asterian was I met him. He was shady, wasn't a big fan. And Did then that him? moment... Uh, no, it, but that moment when he wakes you up in the middle of the night yeah. trying to bite you, I dismissed him. Like there was a dialogue option that was just like, oh, get oh, the yeah. fuck out of here. And he was gone for the rest of the game. I was just like, bye, oh. get out of here. Yeah, because fuck that guy. Uh, are you doing yeah, it? I mean, he's, he or? is pretty evil. <laughs> like, yeah, pretty, I could tell. It, it wasn't so much evil. It was just like, you can't, I can't, I can't trust, trust you, him in the yeah. party. Yeah, no, yeah I can't. can't trust him. Most people would have kicked him out. Like, honest, honest to God, if somebody fucking did that to you, they would probably try to kick him yeah. out. Yeah, I somehow gone. convinced. Uh, this is kind of a spoiler for Act 2, just as a heads up. Yeah. Spoilers for Act 2 of Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, <laughs> I murdered the entire Harper area and then convinced Shahira that I didn't murder the entire how did you do that that's gotta be fucking wild Uh, so I what I had to do was when uh, the the fist Marcus captures Isabel I had to block the doors to the main inn 
so that Jahira never saw into the room. Oh. So she never saw that I knocked out his spell and gave her to the guy. Nice. <laughs> okay. Nice. And then, like, it splits, switches to cutscene. She's gone. The shield goes away, and, like, the murdering commences. Yes. And then afterwards, yes. I'm just like, man, Jahira, that was nuts, huh? Jahira live? That's <laughs> sometimes wild, too. Yeah. Well, I, I had ah. to keep her alive, so I had to kill a bunch of people, but, like, okay. I have wow. allegiances it's to such a, one it's, except it's, to murder. It's, so it's, it's such a good game. There's so many different yeah, options. It's incredible. You can go it's back and yeah, so, like, so I evil. have Jahira on my team as a very evil person. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great are you, are you playing with any any mods this time around or any any changes so to speak uh not really the only i think the only mod i have is for once you hit the level cap you can go over it but you have to go into a different class oh okay gotcha gotcha so like you don't get to the point where like you know wizard get time stop and make game no function anymore yeah. uh Instead, it's just like, ah, okay, well, I maxed out wizard. I'm going to go level okay. druid or sork or become yeah. a barbarian or whatever. Um, sure. So I That's like that fun. one. It's fun. It lets you go. I mean, you don't, there's not enough to go like way over the cap, but yeah. levels, couple you, can, you can go a few levels like over and, and get. And it, it just, it's just fun because it lets you have a little more variety in your builds and stuff like that. So I have a good yeah. time with it. Yeah. Uh, what is Biomorph? Oh, yeah. So I hopped back into Biomorph. This is a game I played at PAX West last year that came out, I want to say like April, March, early-ish this year. Um, it is a Metroidvania combo between Hollow Knight and Kirby. That's the best way to describe this game. Okay. Uh, I'm having a good time with it. I... It was probably my favorite game or one of my favorite games of PAX last year. Came out, we did a preview over on the Save Data channel with it, played a couple, like an hour or two. I had a great time, but then a bunch of other shit was coming out. So I swapped off of it to play things I was a little more excited for and finally coming back to it. And I'm surprised at how easy it is to pick back up because it just controls mm. like the controls are so smooth in general. Like the only one that's a little janky is the wall jump, but like everything else just like controls super well. Um, I'm just I'm just having a good time, man. Combat's fun. It's bosses are difficult, but not like they're difficult, but not crazy is, is kind of where I would put them. Uh, definitely take, you know, several tries to kill one of the bosses typically. But like once you figure it out, you 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 can see the path forward. You just have to execute correctly. And those are the types of bosses I like a lot. Awesome. Uh, Sounds like so fun. I'm having great time. Highly recommend. Literally perfect Steam Deck game runs great on Steam Deck and looks great and everything. So I, I would highly, highly recommend Biomorph. Such a fun time, uh, and I don't think I don't think it really got the pop that it deserved earlier this year because their first half of this year had uh, so many games coming out. We hit the lull now, oh, where yeah. I'm like, man, if this came out like a month ago, I think it might have actually gotten a pretty solid pop. But gotcha, Jason. What have you been playing? Right. So uh, on my stream, I've done. I finished the Nuzlocke recently, Black Two, which was pretty hard. I came down to the wire, nearly lost it at the end. Came down to a 10% freeze, and then I froze the guy and saved it. So I won a Nuzlocke recently. Played it through like a week straight, did it in a week, which is fun. It was a lot of stream hours. Started another one, but that's beside the point. That's Ultra Moon. It's the hardest one. I've had to reset that one like 10 times because it's so hard. Oof. Um, but on the side, uh, I think recent enough, I didn't mention this the last time I was on the local show. I should have. I finished Capes, which we played one stream on save data which is like it's an XCOM. you play as superhero guys as instead it's definitely more puzzly so it kind of gives me um into the breach kind of vibes with it where a strategy mm -hmm. will work like you have to early on too you only have a couple of like heroes like ones like you don't get the speedster once you get a speedster you have like a tornado guy um you have a, a like a tank crystal dude um and one person who can like teleport and like backstab people uh, this game is actually kind of fun. Uh, I had the, I actually had one of the, I don't know what his role on the team was, but he was one of the developers or somebody. He would he would come in my stream and be like, "Hey, we're working on a fix for that. Oh, you experienced this bug. 
oh, like, that was a nice technique, because I was playing on the hardest difficulty, like a, a Maniac on the, the first playthrough. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't see players do this kind of stuff. But it's just fun to get different heroes. You got eight different heroes, all do different things. And, like, leveling them up was super fun, because you could, like, pick and choose what you wanted to level up all, out of all their abilities. But the, the most fun thing about it was um, they had, like, combos with each other. So if I bring the Pyro person and the Crystal person, she can, like shoot out fire like crystals and it does like extra damage and creates like fire terrain i'm like that's fucking sick the speed yeah. if she's paired with the crystal person her speed move it used to just dash across the map and get you like extra distance it can create crystals all behind your path so you can like wall off entire segments of the battlefield if you're wow. like within three spaces of her so the combo system was probably the, the best part about it uh besides like different objectives on each map like you had a a main objective and like side objective like backstab five times or um make sure you take no damage from this specific enemy type or something like that don't let him get his like massive attack off so it felt a little puzzly i can understand some of the complaints if it's on sale and you're interested in those kind of XCOM puzzle likes into the breach um definitely is very inspired from um XCOM a little bit it has that grid system whenever you say yeah. it but it definitely feels a little bit more um hero based rather than XCOM's like soldier base you have like your own guy and you level them up a little bit more rpg to it um yeah it's a fun it was a fun time i'm glad i got to play through it um again getting it on sale if you get a good job uh, uh, good on sale for it it would be pretty good they've definitely patched a lot of it that i had problems with any some of the errors like some of the you have stealth missions they would hear explosions from like across the map like that is a little unfortunate um eased up a little bit of the bonus objectives too so they were definitely listening to feedback too which is a positive for me uh so it's fun yeah uh oh, that's time. awesome anything else you've been playing this week uh mostly like i said there's nuzlocks um yeah ultra 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 moon is fucking brutal dude i would just <laughs> if you ever play it just just don't do you do you like sun and moon because that that got negative buzz and I, that was my second pokemon game and i wasn't a big fan of it there's there's only two pokemon uh, titles I have not liked. I thought besides like I'm not gonna count spinoffs like Arceus, which is not yeah, my vibe. Yeah. The main series titles. Uh, I didn't like Gen Two because it's just a rehash of Gen One, but like worse. Yeah. I didn't like the Pokemon introduced in it too. Um, didn't fix a lot of the the Gen One errors. Gen One you can excuse for being the first one having a yeah. lot of problems. It's gonna be held together by band aids. But Gen 2 should have done probably more. The difference between Gen 3 and Gen 2 is astronomical in terms of repeatability. Um, Gen 2 and then Gen 6. Uh, Gen 6 is the baby mode. Like, it's the easiest Pokemon game of all time. Which, it's such a joke. Which title is that Sun and 6? Moon? That's X and Y. Sun and Moon, oh. people didn't like your right, oh. Ian. But I think they got un unfairly kind of lumped in there. Uh, I think they're kind of fun. Uh, it's challenging. They're extremely hard. Uh, mm -hmm. They have different, like, you don't battle gym leaders, you verse kahunas and, like, totem battles. And the totem battles are yeah. brutal. Um, yeah. But, I mean, they get, I think they got unfairly kind of bashed. Uh, I think X and Y were just kind of boring. Um, well, I think other than Sun and Moon, I think the most recent ones have been the most panned. And not for any, like, yeah, sword game shield, mechanics, like, but just yeah. for, like, this game runs like shit. Sword and Shield had a... <laughs> I, I like the th themes around Sword and Shield. The Pokemon are great. The, the problem with oh, Scarlet and Violet is Scarlet obviously... Violet. Yeah, just, that's what yeah, I meant Scarlet and Violet is just, like, runs like mechanically, deep. like, shit. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. Even when that's it runs, it. it just it's just not that enthralling. Yeah. I, I feel well, like... Yeah. I don't know if we've talked about this, but I feel like... I feel like Pokemon is one of those series where... They should stay 2D. You don't need to go yeah. 3D. You don't need yeah. to. Just, just you know, make it 4K sprites. Make it the HD 2D, whatever you want to do. But don't actually make it a 3D character in a 3D world running the around. 3D models for the Pokemon, it's just break. They can't do it. They can't yeah. keep up. But that's how they, they cut down the how many there were, besides just how many there yeah. were anyway. But they couldn't do a model for each one like that. That'd be ridiculous. Yeah. There's over like and 900 just, now. So. Like the worlds, the worlds of of Sword and Shield, Arceus, and Scarlet and Violet. It was not fun running around those worlds yeah. and exploring and stuff. They 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 it's... they don't do three D environments well. They just stick to two D. Yeah, That's all you they, gotta do. I just I feel like they don't put in, and I mean by put in like they don't budget the amount of time for Pokemon games that they do for like Zelda. a Xenoblade, a Zelda. Because Xenoblade yeah. looks incredible. 
I was gonna say engage, engage yeah. bash the story all you want, which is completely fine. Yeah. But it looks well, like it looks you're amazing. Around. I, yeah. The reason I said Xenoblade is because yeah. it has an open world that you can run yeah. around in. Yeah, or rather, I was, zone, of, yeah, but I was like, just saying Breath of the Wild too. It looks yeah, better than and even Breath of, Breath of the Wild, a lot of the reasons it runs well is because of the art style they choose. But yeah. like Xenoblade looks fucking incredible. Yeah, uh-huh. and you can still run around the open zone stuff, and it runs. I, I don't pretty know well gonna... because they put the time in and the budget for it whereas i, I think they're... for pokemon they're like cool you got two years <laughs> they put this game out i don't know what they're gonna do they i still think they should be i i jokingly said i want to play as like a fucking like mid like midlife crisis adult riding like a fucking motorcycle through oh. the town that'd be sick just like an old dude instead of a kid yeah. like change the formula do some like baby make like you a biker man they'll Let's never put, make you play like an evil guy but like change the formula a little bit please like you know yeah on, like like on. for me like what i want them to do and, and stick with me here i want them to go kind of the stardew valley route and what i mean by that is stardew valley is a very simplistic graphical game and and mechanical to an extent it's just 2d running around but they added so many different mechanics and mechanisms there's romance they're selling there's farming etc and i feel like they need to expand horizontally through adding all these other different mechanics in the game like add a little you know tamagotchi-esque thing where instead of just dropping your pokemon off at a nursery it's like no you actually got to take care of your fucking pokemon add like a child garden. i was to say like add like a child yeah. garden where they actually do like Comp- they've yeah, done that before like competitions yeah yeah they, they have yeah. like races po- literal pokemon contests like yeah. A, yeah like do different uh, like mini games with your pokemon instead of they've done it before it's just exactly yeah so i want them to expand horizontally mechanically i don't need you to go 3d i don't need a 3d open world it's not working because you guys can't do it well enough just go back to 2d and add a shitload more mechanics that's all i want i feel like they won't because they saw how well power world did I, I know and they're gonna be like power. oh you know what we're going down the right route we just like gotta power, do better i like power, power world's five good. minutes yeah yeah no, power world's good i just i i feel yeah. like pokemon saw that and are like okay people there is a yeah there, there is, is a hunger for this type yeah of game. there is but i don't think pokemon company they they've done three 3d games now and all of them felt like shit just the act of running around that world they can't do 3d you you guys you don't have the skill set farm it out to somebody else if you want to but that studio can't make yeah. good 3D games. So go back to 2D. Yeah. So that's what I've been playing. Uh, going back to that, the 3D one. Yeah. Uh, you know, honestly, I have not been playing any games this week, which isn't true. I've played a little bit of Armor Reforged or a little bit of Vito VR. I won't keep talking about those games, except to say they're fucking amazing. But I, I have this problem right now. I'm curious if you guys have this problem as well, which is you're talking about a lull in games right now, which I think is true. New releases. Yeah. But there are so many fucking good indies that came out this year that I have not played yet. Like Animal Well, like Pepper Grinder, like Mini Shoot Adventures, Little Guardsman, Mullet Mad Jack, uh, recent things like Thank Goodness You're Here. And, oh, uh, we did play that on Save Day, and it was really good. <laughs> and I want to play it. And Zach World and I played Goo- through it. Yeah. It was so good. World of Goo 2 came out last Friday. I loved that first game, but I have this like analysis paralysis where I, I don't know which one to play. And so I just don't play any of them. You guys ever have that? Oh, all the time. I the, all the time there's I a couple Animal indies, Library, like yeah. Animal Well and 1000X Resist are the two that I know I need to play. And yeah, it's more of one, like, yeah. I know I'm not in the mood for those, so I haven't played them. But like, I'm once I get, I'm getting that mood. I'm gonna inhale. I need those to play things. Last Spell. I've had Last Spell owned for quite a while, and it's like a ro- it's mm-hmm. like a rogue like like hero yeah. thing. I'm like, I I have my game spreadsheet, and it helps me a lot with the decision paralysis. To be honest, of just like yeah. these are the games that I know are coming out this year that I'm interested in, and then I just go in and. Know, pick which ones I want to play based off of that yeah. list, and which is now harder one. because I got all of the dates and stuff from the Game Informer website that no longer exists. So thanks, <laughs> fucking GameStop, you pieces of shit. <laughs> but then there's also um, a, another shout out is one I did install, but I have not played yet, which is uh, Kintsugami. Is that what it's called? The oh Kintsugami. The, that one's not even Kintsugami, indie. That's yeah. a freaking Sega game or Capcom. I yeah, that's true. One. I think it's Capcom. Yeah, but but it's just like there's so many good games. Yeah. right now that you can play big and small and i just haven't picked any of them and it's like yeah when i said lol i meant lol, lol in big games i did not mean lol in games <laughs> there, there is general. a bit of a lol in in releases in general right now yeah. though you're, you're totally right about that I it's just one that. of those things where 
I, I want to play these games for game of the year, so I'm prepared for that discussion, and I don't want to miss something I'd love. And I just, I don't know what, which one what to is, play. What is, the game, what is the game of the year right now? If you had to, just quick. For me? Yeah. Shit. I don't think uh, I can sorry. pick one. I legitimately oh, don't think oh, I can mine, pick one. Mine's very easy. <laughs> I, I, I legitimately don't think I can pick one. There's, I don't two, think there's, there's two, of my, two at the top of my list, okay. and they're fighting. One is Bellatro. Uh, that was that's not surprising. Killer. Yeah. yeah. Killer. The other one is the operator. You guys played the operator yet? I heard you talk to Zach about this game. It sounded really good. Yeah. It came out a week a couple weeks ago. It, you can play it in, in like less than three hours. I think my playtime was like two hours. It's fucking incredible. Amazing little game. Highly recommend it. Uh third. Hell Divers 2. Hell Divers 2 is very good. Hell Divers 2 is really good. Yeah. I feel like at this point it's it's a solid number two for me, but that that one and two that that first I, spot is a fight. I honestly think it's gonna be a hot take. I don't think this year's been that in comparison to previous years. Uh, we, we 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 need some more heavy hitters. I don't know. It doesn't feel as oh this know. year's felt pretty stacked for me. Uh, like in comparison Final to Fantasy Seven. Final Fantasy Seven just killed it for me. Love that game. Yeah. Burned through that yeah. super fast. That's my game of the year. Easy so far. I'll be shocked if something dethrones that because uh, would... it was incredible for me. Yeah, I was to say games in previous that were like runner up or like third place in like previous years. I would beat a chunk of these games, though, in my opinion. They could be. I, I could see that. I would think so. I could see that. Yeah. But also like compared to last year. Yeah, I think that's probably pretty true. But last year was also like last year was stacked. But this Unless year was like, Tears uh, of the Kingdom and Baldur's Gate Three, which is just yeah. not fair. <laughs> but this 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 feels like twenty twenty two came two years ago. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. Where where twenty twenty two was like a bunch of good games, and then and nothing against Elden Ring, but Elden Ring swept because it did not have that much firm competition. Quite frankly, I it was God of War Ragnarok. But yeah. It had Ragnarok and it had. Uh, Tears, uh, no, Tears of the Kingdom was last year. It had uh, Pentiment. We ended up picking Pentiment over over elden ring but it was it, i feel like that's this year it's a lot of solid eights and nines but all it takes is 110 to come in and just clean up and i think that kind of backs up your point jason whereas last year was a lot of tens yeah and they were I think, fighting I think, that, I think that's fair and i don't yeah. ex- frankly with what's left for this year i don't expect a 10 maybe metaphor revampagio for me but case of the golden idol too that's still playing oh, for this year. Oh fuck, that is still <laughs> slated for this year. Yeah, it is. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. And I uh, isn't um isn't uh Pony Island 2? Isn't that this year? That's from the guy who made uh Inscription. Yeah, but I don't did Pony Island 1 do really well? It I don't think it was big. Jason was a big fan of it and he says it's a lot like Inscription in Which terms of Pony it, Island. Pony yeah. Island, yeah. So I feel that like I feel cool? like there's a lot more buzz on Pony Island 2 now because of how fucking good Inscription was. Yeah, like it's on no, radars I'm, more now. I, I get yeah. that. I'm, I'm just wondering if if Pony Island has the sauce. I hope yeah, it does. I think you're right. I also There's don't know a, that, has come, that that's coming out this year. but Yeah, that's true. But I think you're right. There's really not a lot left because Avowed got pushed. That's, that's in our news. Avowed got pushed to next year, February. So I mean, games that were supposed to be good just didn't have the impact, or maybe not as good as they like were. What are you talking I'm about Suicide saying, Squad was amazing. That was the one I was going to reference. I don't think Star Wars Outlaws is going to be great. Also, I don't think anyone that's, thought yeah, Suicide, Suicide Squad was going to be good. <laughs> like, you know, I don't think you're wrong. But, but like, every time I looked at it, I was like, "Who's making that?" Oh, Rocksteady. Yeah, and then I'm like, "Oh, but it looks problem. like shit." And yeah. it was like, I think yeah, people, that, that just felt like hopium. That like. Rocksteady's yes. making this, so surely it's not that bad. And then it was. Yeah, and they've been making it for forever. So it's yeah. like, oh, it's gotta be good. But yeah, you know? this this year definitely feels like swimming in eights to me. Uh and I still think it's a great year. Like there's tons of great video yeah. games. Prince of Persia and Lost Crown, fucking incredible. Uh gotta play that. Yeah. Like a Dragon Info Wealth. Great game. The, Honestly, even the free to play itch.io Celeste 64. Holy shit, that game rules. Was, is it a 3D Celeste? In it's a, way? an it's a it's made by the Celeste team. It is an N64 Celeste game jam game. Oh my god! It's really good. <laughs> like that's wild. It's gonna be in my top ten, I'm pretty sure. And it was like a 
it's two crazy. three hour game jam game like it is it is it's so good and you know what look we talked about it earlier but i'm gonna shout it out you, you talked about a lot of games that came out and are are doing a lot better and a lot cooler than we thought they would be i, I gotta give props to power world like that game looked yeah. like it was gonna be it, dog fucking trash it actually but... delivered yeah <laughs> In my book it's like a seven out of ten or an eight out of ten and the only problem is it's early access so it like f- the content fell off too early as you're playing through the game but like uh, my, my problem with it was the xbox versus pc versions were kind of Oh, yeah, yeah, messed yeah. up at launch. But like we played that just expecting to be like, ah, this is weird. And then we each put like five, six hours into our saves yeah. in a couple of days. We're like, holy fuck, what's going on here? Yeah. Um, Boys, you ready for the news? Do the news. All right, let's Here's run the through news. the game news section real quick. It's a lot of rumors and teases. Uh, Darksiders Twitter account has is teasing a new game. We have a Yakuza Wars trademark filed by Sega. We have more evidence of a, quote, fully fledged Half-Life game, unquote, revealed by data miners. And the Arcane co-founder has announced a first person action RPG, quote, fans of Dishonored and Prey will feel at home, end quote. Any of these really, really pique in your interest? <sighs> Yakuza Wars has me tentatively excited. Yeah, what what, what is that? You know, what I am it? assuming that that is a strategy game based on thinking so like this is sega tactics yeah sega has another franchise called sakura wars oh god which is like my i haven't played it my understanding is the sort of a strategy game but mostly a waifu simulator hello uh it's it's a husband simulator basically it is is. which part of me is like it could be that they could be making a a yakuza wars um but like i i kind of figure this is a strategy game either from the teams at sega that make sakura wars or valkyria chronicles what what is what is sakura wars the gameplay like uh let me take is it a virtual novel is it a is it a grid-based tactics i believe Oh, wait, is Sakura Wars not on Steam? What the is it heck? A mecha, mecha anime? I'm trying to tell, but it's just a bunch of pictures of waifus. Uh, yeah, I mean... God bless. It's it's a waifu simulator before it's anything yeah. else. Uh, so, so while you're looking that up, the other thing I would say is Wars, for some reason, makes me think Dynasty Warriors. What if it's a game where you're just slashing uh, through enemies? Okay, Sakura Wars, I thought that was a strategy game. It is not. <laughs> it's like visual yeah. novel meets action game never mind that's, that's probably what not kinda... so so i i'm very curious here because like you i trust them to make it a game that is at least good if not amazing and i don't know what they're gonna make because they already have they already have an action game they already have a a, a party rpg now like what's yeah. what other genre that's, are they gonna that's tackle like here it might be strategy especially because there hasn't uh, jason you might know do you remember when valkyria chronicles 4 came out or yeah it should have been like ago. i thought it was like 2016 2018 okay uh that's a long time for that team to not come out with another game i no, wonder they should, if they should just made another one of those because they were good i agree i 100 percent agree valkyria chronicles great franchise well the first and the fourth game great franchise yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh the other two games were so bad they didn't come to the u.s uh the but like that team's been dormant so like i wouldn't be shocked if yeah this was a game from them and they were working on something else and then sega was like actually yakuza is really hot right now what if we make this a yakuza (laughs) game yeah Yeah. uh so i wouldn't be shocked if it were that Uh, i think based on the title it has to be a spinoff uh because they have changed the name of the main franchise to like a dragon is now the yes. main name for the main franchise. So oh, okay. yeah. that means this has to be a spinoff. It's not going to be the main game or anything. Um, That's OK. So which I think is good because like the other the uh, Yakuza. No, they, I think they call it like a dragon as well. They're not consistent with this shit. No, uh, no like a not. dragon Ishin, I think it was. That's the one they put on. That's the one. That's, that's the one from like the 1800s, right? Yeah, that was the the post Meiji Revolution. 
game, which was also pretty good, but it was like an action samurai game. Yeah, I don't want that. But again, not like the mainline series. So I think they're doing a lot of Yakuza spinoffs. I wish this was Valkyria Chronicles. Pretty sure it's a strategy game from the oh, studio that, that does sick, Valkyria actually. Chronicles. Yeah. Okay, wait, I'm sorry. I just, I, something's coming to my mind. You said Like a Dragon Nation took place in the past. Yakuza Wars, World War II. Not a chance. <laughs> not a chance. Not a chance. Not a chance. No, 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 no. Uh, if if uh, anything, I could see it covering the time between like Kiryu and Ichiban, where like because uh, there's a bunch of stuff oh. that happens before before Yakuza Like a Dragon. Yeah, like the, I could the, see the, it the, being like, like a, a turf yeah. war with the Omi Alliance and stuff for for that as like a strategy game. I could see them doing that. That would make sense to me. I'm not a fan of the name though because it just it reminds me of Halo Wars. And then I think, why are they making a Yakuza God, RTS? If it's, if it's an RTS, you know? I'm gonna lose my shit. <laughs> that would be very funny though, if it was just a Yakuza RTS. <sighs> did you have the so same weird. reaction to Battle Aces as I did, and many other people did when they showed that cool yes. anime intro? Yeah. And then they're like, and I was like, this oh, it's is an RTS. Starcraft. And I was like, ah, fuck, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah. Oh boy, uh, gentlemen, let me ask you a question. Do we are you excited at all by another Half-Life game? I don't know. I mean, I've never I've never played a Half-Life game. <laughs> somebody who doesn't have to watch the tech. Okay. Yeah, that's the problem. I, I'm not I'm not really excited. No, it's it, they, they're good. But the reason why they are good is because like Half-Life one was one of the very first like truly cinematic FPS games. Yep. Right. And then Half-Life two had a shitload of a, a lot of cinema ramping it up a lot but it came with the source engine it came with a crazy physics engine yeah. you had the gravity gun and so like when the rumors were half-life alex was half-life 3 and it's a vr exclusive game i was like that makes sense they're always pushing the boundary and that's a half-life game i don't know what they do with half-life 3 un unless it is another vr game but like what other <sighs> boundaries are they going to push you know like what's the excuse to do hear it? me out steam deck exclusive they do some weird shit with Steam Deck tech. Oh, street passing, GPS. It becomes like a geocache game. Yeah, I don't. They, but you see, you see my conundrum it, here. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get what. I the mean, tech it could pushing. be a new engine thing. Like, but that's they just they just released Source Two with Counter Strike Two, and that was like a big. Oh, oh I up. forgot that was on Source right? 2. Yeah. It, it, it was nothing. It was like Overwatch 2. It was like, we're taking away your old thing and replacing it with something new, but it's nearly identical. And it's like, what? Why? Yeah, I don't. I don't have the like emotional connection to it. And also, I feel like I'm really desensitized from Half-Life 3 rumors at this point. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like half of the data mine stuff, because I feel like this is not the first time they've been like, oh, we data mine no. some things and Half-Life 3 is coming. I feel like just sometimes they prototype stuff and it accidentally ends up in the games to be data mined. I can see that's that. That's how yeah. it goes. Yeah, I don't have the details here, but there are bigger outlets picking up on it. So I feel like there there could potentially be something here, whereas before it was always like, nah, there's nothing here. But I don't know that... I'll play a Half-Life 3. I just, I don't know what yeah. they're going to do to get me excited yeah. about it. I haven't looked into it too deep, but like, I also wouldn't be shocked if... Oh, what's that other game that leaked? Deadlock? Is that the name of it? Yes, the, the FPS MOBA, basically. I wouldn't be shocked if whatever this, the leak was, was somehow related to that. Like, if they Actually, started yeah. to prototype some stuff for a half-life three thing and because some it, roundabout way that became deadlock and now the, no, these because deadlock leaked. deadlock has it, it takes place in city 17 they were like hey this is using oh is that a, a half-life thing uh, they're like yeah they're like it's using a um, lot of the half-life scenery and aesthetic yeah, so i think you're, I, I think you're right it could be i would not, not be three. i would not be surprised deadlock. if this was just deadlock stuff then yeah and that's that's fine you know what i really want you know what three i really want there's two threes i really want portal three and team fortress three That'd be. That's what Team I Fortress want. Do you think Team Fortress would do well in like today's, like way? It's so weird. I feel like they have a lot of competition at this point. That's the problem. They're like, is, are team shooters you know? like are, are team shooters like a thing? It's kind of like when oh yeah, 
I, well, I love, I love art. Like, I look, I'm an old school RTS lover. I do. I truly do. I watch them yeah. when I go to bed. Uh, there's no way that Age of Mythology game does well. I love it. No, I want it to do well. No. Zero chance. But, but think about, think about overwatch overwatch to marvel heroes cod it, it, hero based or not hero based multiplayer fps games are still huge right now uh valorant uh cs go cs2 so you're right tf2 would have to come out and kind of make a space because i feel like hero shooters are built off of tf2 yeah that's fine and, i agree but they they seem like an evolution rather than and i'm not saying it's bad yeah. i'm saying they're they're yeah. just more to them and yeah. just I'm going to use my medic on my heavy and kill the guy, you know, I feel like, like but... Valve does like the big revolution thing and then doesn't keep updating stuff. Yeah. And then yeah. they lose the market <laughs> for everything. Yeah. I think the but only has... exception to that has been Dota so far of like they didn't really. Yeah, that wasn't their thing. But they haven't they haven't done that in a while with any of their stuff. Well, hardware Steam Deck. Yes. But but software well, even... wise, they haven't Alex... had anything. But that's that's like five or six years old at this point, isn't isn't it? Yeah, Valve doesn't release games more frequently. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I just mean, um, I feel like there is space for TF2. And the reason why I say that is a lot of the hero shooters stole from TF2. Like think about Bastion and Overwatch is all about you're a turret, right? But TF2, TF2 still has shenanigans because you're placing turrets in different places. And it still has the, you know, 10 versus 10, 15 versus 15. All these hero shooters are trying to boil down to like, it's a defined match. A defined map is 4v4, 5v5, 6v6, and we have ranked. TF2 is still like, nah, man, it's just a server weird map, like 15 versus 15. I, I think if they, I, if they lean into that. There could be space you know, where they lean into yeah. it's not competitive. Yeah, yeah it's I, just still insanity. I, it would have to know? be because I, you're, you know, for TF2 nowadays, Back in the den, you you probably still had this happen, but there'd be like eight spies on like one fucking team. Or like a it's guy would just troll and just pick like eight spies. All like, the okay. scouts. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I think there's space for that. I, I don't want to call it old school, but I feel like a lot of FPS nowadays is putting a lot of guardrails up. And in a lot of ways, that makes the game better. But I feel like there is space for a big, heavy hitter, chaotic multiplayer yeah. FPS it's, like there used to be. Yeah, I was going to say, there's no time splitters too in the modern age. Yeah exactly and i feel like there could be a space for something like that where something is just fun yeah it's not just fun and chaos yeah it's not about it's not about being competitive it's not about getting master tier it's just hey hop into this fps and have a good time yeah um i do have an idea though sorry i hate to stick on this but it just came to me i would be excited about half-life 3 if it was also portal three if they merge those oh, they the keep same teasing, game they keep teasing the same universe and it's like fuck it just make half-life portal three would it be that like would be amazing. still portal like puzzles or are you doing like half-life and then it gets interrupted both both so you get the portal gun but then you've got the half-life combat and you've got the okay. half-life enemies so it's portal plus combat that would be fucking wild hear me out it's asymmetric co-op one person's playing half-life the other's oh playing God. portal and you're helping Mate, each yeah, other you're <laughs> see that's fucking good right there i'm back on board valve i'm back on board valve uh that idea is for sale just yes it is um <laughs> gentlemen let's check out the business journal uh it's all about warner brothers discovery this week oh <sighs> uh, it started with a rumor that they're considering <laughs> selling a stake in their video games business and selling off their uh, video game studios. And then it came back to uh, what I believe is, uh, yes, on the Q2 earnings call, they said that uh, they are looking towards licensing their franchises to exterior video game studios to make video games. Um are you guys excited for this? What do you, what do you think? Do you think this no. is a smart move? Go bad ahead, move? Dude. It feels no, like a bad a... move in every sense of the word. I Let me rephrase. I'm very, I'm mixed on it. I feel like it could be a good move. Do I feel like current state WB is going to be a good steward of their IP and license it correctly? No, because they can't even develop their own games with their own IP that are successful. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I think part of it is like we don't. This is too difficult. We don't want to do it anymore. Somebody else do it for us. And yeah, which, to be frank, has okay worked pretty well for Disney. 
Yes. And, Disney, and when they opened the gates on Star Wars, they got rid of the EA well, exclusive just in, licensing. In general, Disney used to have a whole interactive division. They yeah. shuttered that entire fucking thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, and that was not great. But since then, they have built up a biz dev unit that has been going out and licensing Marvel, Disney, pretty much everything. Star Wars and being smarter about it in the last five, ten years. And there's been some really good games that have come out of it. Yeah. Do I think WB will do that? No, no, I do not. I think they will fuck it up, but I hope they don't. Is if they fuck it up, is that going to be worse than what they're currently turning out internally? No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the thing, I feel, right? I feel like it's like, difficult. The, it's I, I guess worse. the only exception is probably Harry Potter. I felt like they did a good job with that, even though I don't care about yeah. that franchise. Yeah, it got uh, some good reviews. Although they just they just revealed their Quidditch game, which does not look good. Uh, it looks so. It looks bad. <laughs> Okay, looks bad. Pretty, looks All you guys garbo. had to do was just make Rocket League, and and they they couldn't even do that. Um, yeah. I, well, first of all, Quidditch just sucks anyway. If you think about the design of that, if you catch the fucking snitch, you instantly win. Fuck that. It makes the fucking it's, one dude the seeker for way too important. Yeah, yeah. Oh, if if your main character is the fucking seeker, then of course, or whatever the fuck his name is, then yeah, you instantly win the match. Why are the other guys playing the fucking other match, beating each other yeah. with fucking sticks? Do it, make it your own meta. Run three seekers. What are you yeah, doing? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm <laughs> yeah. saying. Like everybody should just fucking go for the fucking snitch. Why wouldn't you all just go for the fucking snitch? So stupid. I fucking hate that. Yeah. Good job, J.K. Rowling. Make the beaters <laughs> worthless. <laughs> fucking dumb. Oh shit! Jason's got some some Quidditch issues. I, uh, hate, I started hating Harry Potter before it was cool to hate Harry Potter. Oh, that's all I'm saying. Oh, it's, I mean, I, it's not cool. It's not cool to hate I don't Harry remember, Potter. I don't remember what grade I was in in elementary school when Harry Potter, like the first book, started to get popular. But I remember us having one of those like reader programs where like you'd read a book and yeah, then you take the like a little yeah. quiz yeah, it's, it's 10, 10, and then you get credit for the book based on how yeah. well you did on the quiz seven out of ten you needed i read a solid third of the first harry potter book even as a kid before i was like this is garbage yeah. <laughs> i stopped reading it. Fucking and wild. i took the test and guessed and passed and got credit yeah. look <laughs> i read harry potter when it came out i reread the whole series a year and a half ago Oh, why? It's got some problems, but you know what? It's a fuck. It's a good page turner. It builds a world. It's oh. it's good. J.K. Sure. Rowling fucking sucks, but Harry Potter's good. Anyways, um, are there other? I, I I did link to this Wikipedia article, which is a quote list of assets owned by Warner Brothers Discovery. Oh yeah, let me take a look at these. I didn't look. At I this. you know I would I I th I feel like if you gave. What if you had a Kerbal Space Program style, Kerbal Space Program slash Gary's Mod style sandbox physics based Mythbusters game? Uh, Kerbal's good and can't make money. That's surely not going to work. Oh, well, I'm not talking about money. I'm just talking about give me a bunch of weird shit, weird little oh, physics yeah, tools and throw them around and do things with them. I don't see that. Give me, give me, take, give me no. jet takeoff engines that I could just throw we on just, anything I want to do a science experiment. We just kind of played a game that was similar to that, or not that that to that extent, but it was um, Teardown. We played Teardown. It was yeah, Teardown's oh, fun. Yeah, yeah, Teardown's fun. So, uh, well, I, I guess. Know. Oh, I guess they got all the Cartoon Network and Adult Swim that could have yeah. some stuff in it. Man, give me a Toonami game starring Tom. Yes. We should bring back that. Uh, actually, that won't, that'll be a licensing nightmare. Should, they don't actually own the rights to any of those anime. We should, <laughs> Never we should bring that PlayStation fighting game back. PlayStation All-Stars. Oh. That's what Multiverses is, which they bought that oh, studio right, right know, before but, this. Yeah, but you had, to use, you had to use a special move in order to kill people. So if your special move was garbage, mm. instead of knocking them off, you would Oh, shit. They, they own Motor Trend. Motor Trend's got a lot of good car content. Give me a Motor Trend racing. You guys aren't familiar with Motor Trend, but just shout out real quick. There's this group in Motor Trend called Roadkill, and it's it's these three or four guys, and literally all they do is they go to junkyards, they find cars that have been sitting there for 20, 30 years, and they're like, we're going to get this running. And they just spend like 72 hours running between the parts store and the junkyard to get this car running. And then once it's running, they're like, 
This car is running, it barely works, but what if we put a brand new $10,000 V8 engine into it and they just make some of the wildest fucking trash cars you've ever seen and just do crazy stuff with it. I would love a car game like that. That would be so I, fucking cool. I don't want anything from here. <laughs> I think you just hate WB in general is what like, it sounds like. It's just like... Okay, what about there's... CNN Virtual Novel? Yeah, you could romance Don Lemon. <laughs> He's the heel. Um, I'm, I'm all right. I'm OK. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. What about, there's... What about I'd Chernobyl? have to go? I feel like I'd have to go really deep before I found something I, know. That I actually wanted. Uh... It's just wild. Like they have so much stuff here. I think well, the problem is, is well, not the IP. A, it's just... I keep thinking of a few things in here that they don't actually own the rights to. Oh, it's a where it's like, oh, well, yeah, the HBO has the series, but it's adapted from a book and they have the oh, series rights, the right but they it. wouldn't yeah. have the game rights. So I'm like, there, uh. there is a piece of news that I'm surprised you don't have here looking up through, through some of the news. Uh, what's, we what's talked about Halo the last time. Uh, fucking how bad that Borderlands movie is. Oh, oh, baby. Yeah. Is it still <laughs> at 4% on Rotten Tomatoes? I think it was a zero the last time I checked, but no, it might be four what? now. It got, was up, one, it got one up positive to four. <laughs> from, I think it was Grace Spellman who it was. And if uh, you know what, honestly, let me read this review live because this sounds like the biggest it's up to cover. Six. It's got okay. six. Oh my God. The, it sounds like the biggest cover your ass uh, review where you're like, people are going to like this. So I can't say I hate it because my fan base is going to love it. Uh, let me see if I can. If, oh my god. People who make give reviews just need to ban social media or something like that. I'm sorry. Or have like a fake account, like a like a go like lemony snicket and do like yeah. a fake fucking thing so that way you don't know like who that guy is. So if you can eat the hate hate on that, because yeah. give an honest thing, man, please. <laughs> Three, I'm sorry. It was, it was, great. It was Grace Randolph. fans will enjoy this, not sure about anyone else. Yeah. Who's playing no, that's playing? Oh, that's the one you were about to read. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I'll, read the, I'll read the full thing. So it's from Grace Randolph. She was, the, she was the first positive, and she said, quote, I've never played the games, but I got a kick out of Blanchett starring in a movie like this and doing a great job. I do wish the script had been adjusted a bit better to accommodate Who, her is age. Is Blanchett playing um, one of the fucking, what are they called? What's her it's name? One of the sirens. Yeah. I forget yeah, the, that, that makes sense. I forget game the game. Yeah. But she's one of the, it, the they're co redhead one, colored haired one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm never going to watch this movie unless one of you fuckheads donates enough money during extra life to force me to watch it. It was a bad idea. Borderlands does not need a fucking movie. Man, I got to. So I have a Should topical have story for this. Yes. Um, so I went to the farmer's market last week and to. I'm sorry. No, it was good. I went to buy. I make mead, <laughs> right? So I went to buy honey. There's local place, local honey. What is the honey farmer called? Whatever. An a uh, apiarist. Local apiarist. Uh, there's some local places that'll sell you like a 12, 15 pound jar of honey, which is what I was looking Ow. for. Uh, takes like three pounds of honey for one gallon of mead, roughly. Uh, so I went to get some honey. And went, got the jar, pulled out a bag to put the jar in because it was like 15 pounds and I didn't want to walk around the whole thing without with the whole farmer's market without it in a bag. And the bag I pulled out was this Borderlands bag that I got from E3 2019. Oh, it was free. I didn't pay for this. That's fair. But, <laughs> but pull it out. It was actually, it's actually a pretty heavy duty bag, which is why I used it for this because it's heavy. <laughs> put the thing in it and the... <laughs> One of the women that I was running the stand is like, oh, that's from Borderlands. Where did you get this? That's like my favorite game series. And I was like, oh, I got it. Oh, no. You know, I got it from from E3 before the pandemic. And she's like, oh, I'm like, I'm so excited for the movie. I was like, yeah, I didn't have the heart to tell her it was going to be trash fire. But like, <laughs> jeez, I, was, I was like just holding it in how much I expect that movie to tank terribly yeah, yeah. so i've just been I, since last saturday i've been waiting for this just to see how much <laughs> this movie is gonna crush that woman's heart when she goes to see it yeah like i i knew it would be bad but uh, but it it has 
Eli Roth has made some good movies before. It has yeah. Craig like, Maslin <laughs> did the first draft of the script. Like you know, it's got it's got some funny actors in it. Kevin Hart can be funny. Kate Blanchett's a good actress, so it was like, there's enough here for for I'm not sure what's gonna. It doesn't look good, but it it could actually be like like Jumanji. Nobody expected that to be good, but it looked the same, and they knocked it out of the park. And it's like, I don't know what to expect. I did not expect zero percent though. That's fucking. Yeah. Wild. I mean, like, I listen. I'm a Borderlands hater. I've never thought these games were funny. Okay, okay. Same. same. I know. Uh, I know. I might not be in the majority there. I might be on the yeah. wrong side of history. That's fine. But like, I never thought the games were funny. So when they announced this movie, I was like, okay, this isn't gonna be for me. But yeah. I hope this is for someone. Even those hopes are dashed. <laughs> like this, okay. this looks like this I will say, no one, one and two legitimately are funny. They've definitely fallen off. I played one and two. I didn't think they were funny. <laughs> Same. Honestly, but, same. But uh, I, I just man, I, I, was I not feel bad 0%. for Borderlands fans. <laughs> that's that's the summary of this. Is I feel oh, bad for Borderlands fans. Are there that much anymore though? Ever since a couple of the recent games got, I don't want to say can, but not but three, even, three, three thought, was really even good. three. A lot of people liked. I don't think yeah, I don't think people who played three much. were like it's it's good as as good as one or two. No, because they had the yeah. pre they had Borderlands the pre. What other the fuck one one? Oh, one pre sequel was not good. Yeah, and Tiny Tina's people had problems with. But Tiny Tina's Wonderland, some people were actually kind of liked. But it was, I, got I think it was just too cheap. different. I play it, but yeah, it's too different. And then um, obviously Tales of Borderlands is good, but it's still a Tales game. It's not gonna. When even the, the first Tales of the Borderlands was good, but the second one came out, and I don't think anyone played that game. Yeah, well, people don't play the Tales games that much anymore, mm. anyway. But. Yeah, I think I think Borderlands has definitely fallen off. It, it's crazy. Hard. You would have thought it would have been like the next like I like, don't want to say like I don't know. It's not gonna have the gravitas of like a Halo, but like it almost had its own like universe and it was gonna be big and yeah. then it just didn't. But I mean it. I mean they had they had three to four good games and then it fell off, and that's like every every fucking franchise, right? <laughs> it's had its franchise run, you know. I'm very surprised. Uh speaking of I'm surprise, just... let's let's talk about layoffs. Uh, great. <laughs> so we got uh, two big, two big layoffs this week. Uh, first up, Meta has closed down Ready at Dawn, which had recently turned into a first-party Quest studio. But this is also uh, the that was studio a while that... ago. That was not recent. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Uh, they had done recently Lone Echo, Echo Arena, Lone Echo Two, etc., which were big in the VR community. But previously, they had done God of uh, the Order 1886 and uh, God of War Chains of Olympus for PSP and Ghost of Sparta. This is uh this is sad news, right? It's very sad. I actually know a bunch of people from Ready at Dawn, so uh, this was oh. very close to home. Their office was like two buildings down from the office of the place I used to work at. Uh so I ran into a bunch of people from Ready at Dawn just like at lunch randomly pretty frequently in the past and now uh-huh. those people don't have jobs and their business is shut down so I feel really bad. It, yeah. it it's just a continuation like of I think the game like we're in a really transfer like transformative part of the gaming industry cuz I don't know it's it's so crazy that I I feel like it in terms of like how everything costs and like everything hasn't adjusted that well, if it makes any sense. Yes. Like, yeah, AAA consum- games are way too expensive now. Yeah. yeah. But they, well, they, they, but people to make, to make. Yes. Yes. To make, yes. To, make. to make. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So like the bubble is just bursting. Like, I don't know what is going to happen. People are just going to have to pay like 80 bucks to keep people Fuck in. I, I don't know. I, there's no like winning scenario for anybody because, but, I, but I think part of it is, it. part of it is, you know, if you're making a game and it costs three hundred million dollars, and I have to pay seventy dollars for it, yeah. that's fine. You can be successful off that. It's called GTA Five. It's called multi. It's called Elden Ring. It's called other games that are that are AAA and they hit and they sell a shitload of copies. The problem is the games are costing much more to make, and the quality of AAA games is less. That's subjective, but yeah. I feel like they are putting out more stinkers now. And it makes people want to say, no, I not every like, AAA game is, is a solid seven minimum. There are some I feel like fucking it's because a lot out. of the cost is in visuals. 
like yes visuals yeah. and animations and all that yeah, jazz is, dumb. is where a lot of the cost comes from and like mocap and all these other things um, fucking idiots thanks god and like for thanks sure design us. and programming and stuff also incur a lot of cost too but I, like i feel like keeping up with the visual standards is what is I think you really can fucking expensive. Their, their yeah. Better. yeah if they can. Really fucking dumb. expensive to keep up with all that stuff. And then it, I feel like it, it kind of does bleed into the programming place because you've got like PS5 uh, era where like people also want to turn on 60 FPS. So it's yeah. like, okay, this game needs to be the most beautiful yeah. thing I've seen and run at 60 and, FPS. And it's like, and for, 4K 60 FPS. Yeah. Hey, y'all. That's expensive. It yeah. takes a lot of time to do all of the optimizations to get it at 4K 60. Like that is an expensive <laughs> thing. It's just uh, so weird because like yeah. like who who are they chasing with that, right? Each other. Yeah. That's true. It, they're just yeah. they're chasing each other. They're chasing these press conferences. They're chasing the visuals on the side of their box and their marketing and advertising. Meanwhile, you have a shitload of indie games or even AAA games that don't go after visuals like Tears of the Kingdom. And they're they're making money hand over fist compared to your Suicide Squad because at the end of the day the visuals don't matter as much as mechanics. I would they just kill don't. to know how much Tears of the Kingdom cost to make. Cuz that's I, one where it's the opposite. I, like I don't think out, their right? I don't think their art was that expensive, but I think they spent a lot of time on programming oh, to get yeah. that thing to run on the Switch. Yeah, I feel like it it came out Speculation is 100 to 150 million dollars for the budget. That's for a Nintendo game. That's a lot of money. Yeah, that's still a lot of money. And and, um, I want to say Alan Wake 2 was like what? I feel like we looked it up. Wasn't it like 55 to 100? That sounds great. That game looks great, but it has gameplay to back it up. 70 million euros. So it's like. You're totally right. That's what they're chasing. And my thing is like, why are you chasing that? Especially when it's not delivering as consistently as you think it would. And the gamers are not flocking to that necessarily. They don't love God of War. They don't love Last of Us, Last of Us 2 because of the visuals. It's because of the story and the mechanics and the characters, etc. The visuals are a bonus. I feel like it's a balance that needs to be found. And I feel yeah. like visuals have gone way to the to the right side of the scale and it's like okay maybe we need to bring those back a bit uh but at this point if you bring it back then people are gonna be like oh that looks like a ps exactly ps4 game that's why you have to stylize it if you can the games that do well can stylize it in their own way and still get around corners but you brought up a good point which is which is animations and mocap etc which which is but that's that's I want to say style choice, but that's not quite right. But it's like, hey, if you're chasing God of War and Last of Us, those games are mocap heavy, right? But you can absolutely make a 4K 60 FPS game that looks amazing. Something like um, Hi-Fi Rush. Like that game looks fucking incredible, but it's because they leaned into the style and they're not spending mm-hmm. a shitload of money on trying to make like... And hey, guess like what studio doesn't graphics, exist anymore? anymore? That's true. That's true. But... My point is you can make a beautiful game without sinking money, trying to chase the realistic visuals, trying to chase the sinuous sacrifice. We have to make this look as real and human as possible. And it's like, you don't have yeah, to do I that. Think, I think it's just like, that's where the money has been is making the realistic narrative heavy third person yeah. games has been there. That's where a lot, and not even like right. there's a ton You're of money right. in them as much as it draws people to your platform. I, I agree. It's it's Sony fans fault because they keep <laughs> buying these mediocre ass video games. <laughs> I agree. Thank you for, for coming into my hatred of, of I mean, Sony hey, first party games. I don't know that I would agree with that, but it's OK. We already said it. Uh, <laughs> gentlemen, um, I hate to end on a downer, but that's that's it for this evening. Um, we do have one little thing called wishlist spotlight i'm bringing it back because somebody highlighted a game on steam with a tweet called they're making mahjong Bellatro," and uh it's just a steam game called aotenjo 
A-O-T-E-N-J-O. And it looks like it is literally just Bellatro, but with Mahjong. Oh, this wow. They insane. were not subtle about this. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, not, even, not even a little bit subtle about the art style and the menus and everything. I, I'm, I'm into it. It does look like they have um, like uh, items. Like multiplier items in the top right, it kind of looked like. But anyways, shout outs to, to this game, because Bellatro is a s- style of game they need to make more of the um, Degenerates and Gamblers, which I think is the Blackjack Bellatro like came out today or this week. Uh, and that's getting some good reviews. We need more Bellatro games in our life. You guys like Bellatro? I have a I have I, a game that is basically like that. That's came up before it, which I was I really liked. I talked about it, I think, on stream. Um, let me pull it up. I, he what, David can talk. Why is it? Uh, Ace is be a landlord. Ace, Aces and Adventures was kind of like that. Oh, uh, I'm re talking about that. Yeah, you play as like characters and you like you know do attacks based off what what cards are in your hand. Oh, hey, gotcha. I don't like card games or roguelike, so Bellatro is my hell. Um, I'm good. I don't oh, play really? It. Have you have you tried it though? No, I have no desire to. Like, I well, the, have literally zero interest in this game. Yeah, Just I'm happy for it up else, is, but I have no interest. The only reason I bring it up is I'm not a big fan of card games either, and I'm not a big fan of roguelikes or run based games. And I feel like this game dodges a lot of those pitfalls and is different enough. That it's you're right. It is both of those games, but at the same time, it's it doesn't really feel like it when you're playing it. So it's worth a try, I would say. It's it's just something unique going on there. The numbers go big, and you get you get a boner. That's what it's like playing Bellatro. numbers. Numbers big does nothing for me. Okay, see now that's a, that's a. Have you been to a doctor? It's true. Doctor, the numbers get yeah. big. Nothing happens. I don't get happy. I, I feel like I just had. S- I've played so many number get big game where like now number get big oh. no make me get big you know <laughs> number get big me get small <laughs> but doctor but doctor I am big number <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, I, I don't know I, I feel like it just kind of wore off uh, yeah I get maybe, it I don't know maybe maybe at some point I'll I'll care again but for now I, I don't <laughs> And even for it's roguelikes, good. like I've Got only played wristful. one roguelike that I like, and it was Hades. And I finished one run, and I never picked the game up again. It ended badly. I try not to think about it anymore. Uh, maybe one day I'll <laughs> rogue again. <laughs> one day. Anyways, folks, uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm not going to play the outro music because uh, I think it's 30 seconds long. So I'm going to leave that. Uh, g- get your plugs in now. Jason and David, where can folks find you? I uh, at Twitch.tv, hour fifty nine, five ninety. Wait, I'm sorry. What? What is that again? It's Rob. Go to, go to <laughs> Twitch. Hio five nine zero. Hio five nine zero. Yes. Uh, Twitch.com. Uh, wild. Uh, David. Twitch, Twitch.tv. You mean? <laughs> yeah. Twitch. Go to Twitch. I'm a Twitch. Justin.tv. Uh, you can find me occasionally at uh, Save Data. That's at Save Data Team on YouTube, Twitch, all that jazz. Question. Um, you weren't in the Pokemon tournament. Is it because you hate Pokemon? Yes. Genuine question. Uh, I don't even know if I got asked to be in the Pokemon No, it, it worked out because we had 18. I just needed six people. And I to oh, me. wow. But if we do, if we do another one with more people, like yeah, I, West said, yeah. West says he wants to be on. Uh, David it's says his fridge was going to be a backup. Yeah. Uh, Kyle, I think uh, said we we talked about Pokemon a little earlier. Like I'm yeah. not a poke poke freak. I'm kind of whatever on Pokemon. I, I hope. But I'm if not, like if we're but... doing like a like that tournament was super fun, so like I would absolutely hop into that and play. I, sorry, I don't mean to go backwards, but Jason, I feel like you would know this. One of the other options we talked about was each of us builds the team, etc. But so then. Else? use it or something like that no we 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 throw it into an auto battler so it's ai versus ai using our teams and we just watch it is that tech already out there to an extent where that's even feasible or is it just like i don't know about auto battle i can i can look it up in the meantime but because that could be fun all of us like shouting at our own teams and being like what are you doing you know i have no idea actually that's a good point all right, well, let's uh, let me uh, kick off the outro here, uh, folks. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been another episode of Local Chat. I forgot to mention at the top, Will's dead, uh, so he's not going to be on here anymore. <laughs> 
Uh, but thank you guys so much for watching. You can find us at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Mixer. And we'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern, for more Back to New Vegas. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Deuces.